welcome. Let's keep chewing on what's happening internally in the beams in order to transfer this 100 newtons over to our 50 newtons, to our reaction forces. So we've learned that on the left hand side of the applied force, we have this shear reaction of 50 newtons. It's 50 newtons down and that's to um, counteract the 50 newtons up. And that continues. It continues pushing down. It continues a 50 newtons down force until right here, until this 100 newtons gets applied. And that's where we go to 2. You can see that uh, when we went to 2, oops, right there, when we went to 2, now it's 50 newtons going up. That's really interesting. It's 50 newtons going up. Finally, as we continue to cross to number 3, no matter if this was 2 meters or 1 meter, all the way over to 5 meters, it's not going to matter. You're going to have 50 newtons going up. What I'd like to do is take a second and see if we can graph this. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's pretend that this is a graph and this is the shear. And uh, what we will do is use the symbol V. It's just what we do. And we know that a millimeter to the right of this 50, if we had just cut the free body diagram right here, remember this distance doesn't count. Just a millimeter to the right, it's going to be 50. It's going to be 50 facing down. Now, convention is that the shear under this situation, 50 newtons facing down, we call that positive shear. So one millimeter right, right across. Let's let, actually let's bend, uh, draw this beam all the way across and uh, you know whatever zero meters 10 meters and we know that the shear at this location it's not going to change it's going to stay constant all the way until we get to the middle this is positive 50 50 uh, 50 newtons but then something special happens once we hit the center point once we hit this 100 newtons down the direction completely changes. So instead of positive 50, let's draw a negative 50. It comes all the way down. And then we learned once you get to the other side, that 50 newtons is going to change. It's 50 newtons here, it's 50 newtons there. It's going to keep on going all the way to the end. All the way to the end. And at 10.1 meters, what's the shear going to be on a 10 meter beam? Well, zero just disappears. Everything just disappears. So this is our shear. Goes from positive 50 to negative 50. So we can kind of feel our way in the in if you're inside that beam, that hundred meters is pushing down and it and it splits half of it to the left and half of it to the right. What does that look like? Well this is what it looks like. It's pushing down. It's pushing down. So that's the cheer shear. Let's take a look now at what's happening with the bending moment. Let's scroll down a little bit. All right, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it right here because we want to reference as much as possible. Um, and just because I like this little diagram we've done, the bending moment, we're going to put that right here, okay? And um, you should know by convention, the way we have the the feel or the sense of this bending moment right here where we're looking at um, 50 Newton meters in the counterclockwise direction we consider that positive bending moment okay well remember what we saw we saw that the bending moment if you're right right a millimeter like our micron to the right of the far left if you're just you're in you're in free body diagram one and you're right here, your bending moment is your shear times your distance. Well, if your distance is like zero, really close to zero, your bending moment's going to be zero. And we saw that we just take right here, we take the distance right here times the shear. The shear is going to be the same. The distance will change and it's linear. So we know that as we move from the left, as we move from the left that bending moment is going to increase. And the bending moment is going to hit its hit at the very middle. It's going to hit 250. Let's
let's uh, let's let's put a uh, kind of like a little right here. There we go. Kind of a little bit of a separation between the shear and the bending moment. So it linearly goes up. Now, interestingly, we also looked at how um, in section three, further to the right that this 50 newtons, its influence kept increasing and increasing the further it got from our pivot point. So that means that as the distance increased linearly, the bending moment decreased. All right, and it just kept on decreasing, kept on decreasing, kept on decreasing till right here. And like the shear, there's no bending moment once you're off the beam. So the bending moment looks just like this in this setup. Two things you need to know in order to make these diagrams. The first is always draw your free body diagram. That's all you have to do. Just draw your free body diagram. Everything follows from that. Okay. The second thing is something more subtle but very very powerful. I want you to look at the shear and the bending moment. Now, if you remember, we got the bending moment and we got that by taking the shear, whatever that shear was, multiplied by the distance from the, uh, from the origin. Okay. And we did that for the left hand side. We took the shear times the distance right here. Now, if we take, that means that the slope, the slope, how much rise over run, the slope over this area, it is the shear. So the shear is this slope. And that's one way with, that I can do a lot of these pretty quickly. I know that in the center, I know the shear is 50 meters, right? Or 50 newtons. And I know that's being applied over five meters. So I know if the slope here is 50 newtons per meter and there's five meters, easy, 250. And then, and then check this out. Now your slope goes to negative 50, which means now the slope is just down at 50 newtons per meter. So in other words, the derivative of the bending moment as you change your radius is the shear. This can be really powerful because it's a little bit easier to figure out the shear and from that you can easily jump over to the bending moment. So this right here is number two, that the derivative of the bending moment is the shear. Those two um, facts, draw your free body diagram and know that the derivative of the bending moment is the shear that will give you what you need to solve all the cool complicated problems you're going to get. Start off with that free body diagram and know the relationship between your shear and your bending moment as you move across the beam. Thanks and we'll see you soon as we look into this more.